All right, let's get to it. You've seen everything on this table. In fact, this is a monitor from three years ago that I got for, uh, well, even before I was doing uh, know-how, go figure. This is the monitor we took a look, uh, sorry, the, the laptop that we took a look at on Thursday, the Acer Spin 7, a beautiful little convertible that's quite possibly the most elegant ultrabook that they put out there, plus it's a convertible, and of course, it has touch. Now, together, what they do is they create a system where I can have a Surface-like computer that gives me also the ability to undock and go portable. That's right, that monitor was being driven just by this one connection, which uh, in that one connection, I have power, I have USB, and I have the connectivity to my monitor. Let me show you how it's gonna work. This is a standard Windows 10 desktop. Right here, I've got a little Hutu. Uh, again, we took a look at this last Thursday. This takes USB-C in, it has a port here so I can take my USB charger and plug it in. It has an HDMI port right here so I can get HDMI out up to 4K. And then this is a USB 3.0 port which allows me to have access to the sensors, the touchscreen that's actually going to be on my monitor. Now the nice thing about a USB system, and this is why I would suggest you use a laptop like the Spin 7, is because you have a single connection. In fact, I can even, I can stretch out this connection if I wanted to make it a little bit longer. I could do something like this, a USB-C extension cable, so I can put all of this in the rat's nest behind my monitor. This is actually going to be a know-how project in the future because I'm going to go ahead and build a little VESA mount that will take all the cables, including the adapters, the two power adapters, one for the monitor and one for USB-C, and mount them up in the back of this area. Now, once I have this connected, I just do this. One singular connection. It's going to give power to my laptop, so you just heard it chime a little bit. And as soon as it finds its, uh, its uh, connection here through the Hutu, it's going to go ahead and start sending HDMI through the back port here. Now, what you're going to get once you have this connected is you have an immediately dockable surface. It is a touchscreen. So, for example, let's start up an app that uh, you saw Leo play with. This is Sketchable. Now, people are going to say, oh, wait, wait a minute. The, the advantage of having something like the Surface Pro is that it can turn into a drafting table. Well, this three-year-old monitor can do that, too. It's not as elegant. The hinge is not quite as nice, but it still works really well. And it's incredibly functional, incredibly responsive. Uh, I know there's also going to be people who say, well, the Surface has a pen and the Surface has a dial, but you can actually do that with this. We, at, at, at IFA this year, Brian and I took a look at the products from Wacom. They have a bamboo stylus that will link via Bluetooth to your computer, and what it does is it gives you the precision of a pointer, but it also allows you to have the touch sensitivity, pressure sensitivity, so artists will know everything from how hard they're pushing on the tool to the angle at which the tool is laid, which gives you all of the really cool features that you want out of a, uh, out of a drafting device. Now, Alex, if you switch to this input, you'll notice that, I mean, the response, it's, it's as good as a Surface. In fact, it's better because this is a much higher spec computer than uh, Leo's Surface. Leo's is an i5 with a spinning hard drive. This is an all SSD system. In fact, this is an M.2 SSD. It's really nice and fast. Plus, it's got an i7 processor with the same amount of memory. Now, it's not just a pen. If I really, really wanted a knob, and, and honestly, I think Leo nailed this, the knob, the dial is a little bit of a gimmick right now. You could get something like this. This is a, uh, a Griffin PowerMate. These sell for about 60 bucks. I've got a little uh, a link here. They're not great on PC. They will work, but I find that I have to disconnect and reconnect a lot because they were really designed for people using OS X. Go figure. They have a Bluetooth version of that, but that really only works with Macs. They might write drivers for Windows if people are interested enough. So uh, if you're looking for a dial, well, this is basically it. It works the exact same way. It doesn't have the touch sensitivity. In fact, if I put this on the screen, it kind of, it, it can make the sensor go crazy because now it's getting multiple inputs at the same time. But if I just wanted a way to, uh, to be able to control scrolling or zoom or undo, this works exactly the way as the dial. So right now I've got a $1,200 laptop, I've got a $500 monitor, and I've got maybe $100 worth of accessories, and I've got a Surface. And I've got something with a cool hinge that allows me to use it as a desktop or in drafting mode. Again, it's sliding on a Surface that's not ideal right now. It's not as elegant, but the wonderful thing about this is I can take my laptop and walk away. It's not as if I have to take the entire 28-pound desktop. This stays at home, and this comes with me. And because I'm using USB-C, I have the ability to combine all the different cables, all the different dongles into one. Even better is the fact that this monitor 
also acts as a USB 3.0 hub, which means that if I really want to, I can have things like my network adapter and my hard drives plugged into the back of this monitor. And as, as soon as I plug in the one cable that is on, uh, on my laptop to this little Hutu, I have access to the monitor, I have video on the monitor, and I have access to my network. Now, one more thing that you could do with this, and I, this I really am enamored with because this is a convertible, I could actually set this up so that this monitor is extended rather than mirrored. In other words, this could be a separate, smaller touch monitor that I use off to the side. Imagine that for an artist. This could be in your main drafting surface. This could be where you store all your tools. So instead of having to flip through tools, you just touch it on this screen, and it's immediately accessible on this screen. There are some disadvantages to this. Of course, it's not as elegant, it's not as beautiful as a Surface, and also the resolution is not even close. Remember, the Surface Studio is gonna run you about 4.5K. It's just a gorgeous screen. This one is 1080p, and you can notice it. In fact, Alex, if you switch back to the, uh, the, the side view here, yeah, you, you can see it. The, the color is, is the same, it's not the same. I mean, I know the angles are different here, but in person, it looks the same. This is rich and this is saturated. This is using the, uh, the early version of IPS, so it's not quite as saturated. You do kind of get a little bit of a color fade. Now, they have a 2K version of this, and I believe they're going to be releasing a new 4K version of this that has a much nicer panel, but of course those are going to be more expensive. Uh, the 2K version is about eight to $900, and I think the 4K version will probably go for about $1,200. But at $500, this is still a really, really good way for you to get Surface functionality for your non-Surface computer. Now, one more thing. We were often saying, when we were doing the early re reviews of the Surface, that we would love the ability to take that, that monitor, that big monitor with the beautiful hinge with all that resolution, and connect it to a desktop. So that I would always have something that's up to date, I would always have something that's powerful enough for me to do things like video editing. Well, if you go this route, that's not just a possibility, that's exactly, exactly what you're going to do.